Okay, thank you everyone. And now it's time for the weekly speaker spot. And each week a member gets to eight minutes to share with the group further insights into their business or enlighten the group a little bit more about themselves. Members can also use this time to problem solve or seek assistance and advice from the group as a collective. The time is yours to use. Over to you, Misty, and your crown. Ah, thank you so very much. So today, our speaker today is the wonderful, two seconds while I set it up on my screen. Oh, I've paused, haven't I? Oh, here we go. No, Have I come I'm back? All oh, right, okay. Yep. Brilliant. <clears throat> today we have the wonderful Neil Holmes as our speaker today he's completely unaware of it but that's fine there is some people that I coach before they come into business at breakfast to speak and there's others that I allow free reign but only when I give them the method of which they're going to speak and today we have Neil so I was just having to catch up with Neil and having a one-to-one, -one, but I have known Neil for a number of years now. Um, first studied at um, HMP or Happy Neighbourhood Project, and then um, he's come out to business at breakfast, and we've sort of come and gone from each other's circles for a bit, and we're back out together again. Neil is from America. He's from Louisville and Kentucky over in America. He is a voiceover guy. He's a radio guy, and he does um, ads for Spotify and companies like that. So um, he helps businesses promote themselves through ads on, I'm just going to keep using Spotify as the example because I use Spotify. And you know what's interesting? Ever since meeting Neil and knowing that he helps, like he helps people put ads on Spotify, I now have refused, like I use Spotify, and I started a couple of years ago. Um, I use Spotify, but I refuse to have premium because premium says you don't have any ads. And I'm like, but now I'm not going to be able to find Neil on any of the things that I listen to. So I actually refuse to have premium so I get to hear the ads. And then whenever I hear a ad on Spotify, I think, I wonder if that was one of Neil's. So Neil, I want you to tell us more about what it is you do today, but I'm going to give you some structure. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to put into the chat box exactly how I want you to start, right? So... Show me my computer's not going to glitch on me. Here we go. I want you to start with your elevator pitch based off this structure here, right? Two seconds. Uh, oh, no, two seconds. Here's the structure in the chat box. It starts with your full name, then your business name. Then I want you to answer this sentence, IMA. And then I sell it costs or for you it starts at and the people who buy it so I want you to answer those questions for us nice and simple and then I want you to tell us the history between you and that thing that you sell so we know that it's ads on Spotify so it's like radio ads on Spotify use that one as I sell radio ads on Spotify right and then the history of you to that thing I don't want to know about the whole of Neil but how did you end up making ads for Spotify. That's all I want you to tell us. And then we will have questions to ask you, I am sure. So just give us that elevator pitch, the history of you to the radio ads and Spotify, and then let us direct the rest of the story for you. And I'm thinking Joanne, um, right at the beginning, telling me I was in the hot seat. I didn't realize how right she was. <laughs> nor did she I also didn't yeah I didn't realize how hot it was either yeah this is a, a total surprise and you know and not not unwelcome my name is Neil Holmes um I am from Voice Creative that's a company who started uh, back in the 90s uh, when the internet was just getting started to produce um voiceovers and radio um and that's basically what I do uh, write and produce radio commercials. We do it with actual humans and not some AI voice because um, there is a difference. There's a, an emotional difference, more relatable to use a human voice. Um, that's what I do. I sell, for the most part, um, anything to do with audio, voiceovers for audio books. Um, I say that for Crystal um, and and other things along the way. Um, if it has to do with audio, that's something that we can take care of. Particularly what uh, Misty was talking about is the ads for Spotify, where we basically can produce a radio commercial for uh, Spotify and target that to a specific area. 
So if we just want to hit Brisbane or if we want to hit where I'm in Louisville or any um, even smaller areas than that, it is something that we can do so that you don't waste money selling uh, to areas that can't buy what you're selling. Um, you're not wasting money that way. Let's see. Um, it starts at about 1500 US and the people that buy it find uh, results that they're looking for because we can target down to a specific type of person, whether it's a wine lover or a book lover or someone interested in driving a Toyota, we can get that specific in a lot of cases to make sure that we're addressing just the people that want your service or your or what you're selling. And how did I get into this? As I mentioned, Voice Creative started in 96 um, because I was in radio. I got into radio. My father had been in public broadcasting for years and um, wanted me to follow that. So, of course, I had to rebel a little bit and go into commercial radio. And uh, that's where I found my passion for not so much being on the air, being what Misty's called the FM DJ voice, but um, for uh, being in the production studio, because that's where you can really have fun. Um, we Radio, I've called this the most visual advertising medium possible. Because if I say there's a girl on a swing, you have just seen her. And each image in e your own individual head is different than everybody else's image. And that's why it's the most visual is because you participate in creating that image so that it becomes more memorable and one-to-one -one for you. Uh, that's what makes it so, so special and so visual. Instead of having a TV showing you the image everybody else sees or a billboard or something like that, you're creating it yourself. Um, so I got into that area uh, in the production studio, building campaigns where we have um, added, we caused one advertiser to have to hire three people in a, less than a week because the ads were so successful for cookie bouquets, as a matter of fact. Um, we've uh, doubled attendance at events um, where I grabbed my daughter when she was a lot younger, took her into the production studio and just tickled her recorded her laughing, and then made that an ad for playing with rabbits at a local mall for Easter. And they had a um, phenomenal turnout, better than they had in the past three years combined. So there are things that you can do with sound, make it sound like she's actually playing with rabbits. All I did was tickle her in front of a microphone, um, which she haunts me about till this day. Um, she's still like, yeah, I remember that. It hurt. Um, but being able to create those images are is what the passion for me is. That and the tertiary is being able to help businesses grow, like we did with the cookie bouquets, like we did with that mall. Um, that mall campaign actually turned into a full campaign where we did a series of um, commercials over the next year about shopping at that mall and the things they had um, and really helped grow that uh, the success of that mall in a small town in Minnesota. Um, so that's where my passion lies. That's what I'm doing. And I'd love to be of service. And that's the uh, the key issue is, is really getting in and saying, how can we help you grow your business? Excellent. Well me. done. Thank you so much, Neil. Now, based off that, I reckon we have questions. So put your hand up who's got questions for Neil. I know I've got a bunch, but I think I'll let others see if you ask those questions first, and then I'll have some for Neil. Katie, you've got your hand up. I do. Um, more, more of an observation, but I'm probably going to end with a question. I loved how you pointed out that the visual of the words that you use, you know, like the words you use create a visual in somebody's mind. I love that you shared this story about tickling your daughter, like that's just gold, Neil. <laughs> um, tell me, it, though, is that because radio is no pictures is it just simply down to the the words that you choose or is it tonality as well because you have a very nice voice and I know you do have little inflections there but I haven't heard your your ad so how much inflection do you use it varies by the ad and what the purpose is but it's it's more than just the words and how the it is how they're said for sure but it's also a lot of times you'll, we can use a background music bed or a couple of different ones to help further an image along um, or different sound effects. Um, 
I'm reminded of seeing Joanna again and maybe dogs barking or something like that for um, whatever the um, the campaign might be for. But it's it's whatever sounds we can find that enhance the visual image. Um, if I was doing if I was doing a postal service and we deliver your door, I certainly want to wouldn't want to use dogs because that's yeah. going to be bad for the postal carrier. So um, whatever's enhancing the the image to create the image in each individual's mind. So kind of like when they do a radio play and they have the wobble board and stuff for sounds of storm and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, it is a lot like Foley. And in essence, that's where Steal My Thunder came from, is they needed, they were doing a theater play and I believe it was London, and they needed the sound of thunder. And so a gentleman came up with hanging a sheet of sheet metal from four strings. And so they beat that when the thunder came on. And then somebody else started doing it. And he came along and said, hey, you stole my thunder. And that's where that um, phrase comes from. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Third. How are you doing? I look, um, you know, I definitely agree. The power of audio. Um, literally behind me is my recording studio. So I've got a, a big history within that as well. And um, look, it's just, it's just amazing. But I'd, I'd love to know um, when it comes to the, at the ad creation, um, so how are you getting the, the high rotation through Spotify um, so, that, so that it's effective for people? Or do you not have that part of the process? process it's only the creation of the aid itself. No, that's a great question. And you're, you're talking, what I understand you're talking about is reach versus frequency. And reach being um, how many people hear the ad. Frequency being how many times each person hears the ad. and. Uh, Spotify is one of the challenging ones where sometimes they don't deliver the frequency I'd be looking for because I like to expose um, each individual to the ad at least five times. Um, I know it's possible with them because I have turned on Spotify and been beaten to death by a local grocery store. Um, it's like the first five breaks is a, a local grocery store ad. So I know it's possible. Um, have I gotten their secret yet? Not quite, but it's something that I'm working with them about. Excellent. Joanne, you've got your hand up. How do you, Misty? Yeah, you know, I just sort of like to know for the $1,500, how many ads does that relate to or turn into? Roughly 40,000. Okay. So my question and is, is that, what time frame? Yeah. That would normally be over about a month. Okay. So isn't this interesting, Neil? So Neil and I were chatting before business at breakfast, right? And me being the sales queen that I am, I ask simple questions. Tell me what you sell, tell me how much it costs and tell me who buys it, right? So once I get through that and I said, right, but only answer those questions really simply, right? So he says, so, you know, in essence, he says, I sell radio ads on Spotify, right? Give one example, radio ads on Spotify. Great. How much does that cost? He says it starts at $1,500. I said, stop talking. I now have questions. And I said, these are the top two questions that are going to be asked, Neil. No matter what, 100% of the time, these will get asked. Make sure that you can answer them and don't worry about what the person's reaction is. So first question will be, how many ads is that? Isn't that funny? That's why I held out for as long as possible. Joe asked it, how many ads is that? 40,000. Next question straight away. Over what time frame? I mean, how do you deliver that many ads? <clears throat> Over a four month time, uh, four week time frame. Those are always going to be the top two questions that you'll be asked, Neil. And well done because you answered that beautifully. Um, I have talked to Neil a lot about this. Feel free to jump in if I'm getting something wrong, Neil. But I've talked to Neil a lot about this to the point where I talk to the kids about it. Like I listen to Spotify, Simon says, you know, put on um, uh, YouTube Plus, we've got it or whatever it is. He said, you know, you know, I'm paying for it. So, you know, you know, we've got that membership and do that. And so I have YouTube on sometimes. But, um, but I like to listen to Spotify because I am listening for the ads. And then the boys and I talk about the ads that we hear. When we were in Canberra, there was an ad. Who's ever heard the ad for Square Up? And um, Ollie, the guy that was making, well, it was cookies actually, who was making cookies. 
And then there's this one line in it that he said, you know, like I've become the boss and everyone calls me Mr. Ollie. <laughs> well, where we used to live, we'd take the dog for a walk and we'd go past the house where there was a big husky and his name was Ollie. So every time we walked past, so for the, the boys, boys were little, right? They'd walk past and they'd go, Mr. Ollie, <laughs> how's your day, right? And, and I'd meet Neil and Neil talks about Spotify ads and certain ads that you hear over and over. And I ask him the questions, how does that work? Why do we hear that? Um, over and over and it's because that ad is locked into a postcode uh, and, a, and a time frame <clears throat> and so while I haven't heard that ad in over two years every time I think of Spotify that ad comes to mind and it just went down to Canberra so it's reminded me again oh yeah the um, Ollie ad and the cookies um, so these ads do sink into your head a lot I know Neil is such a great person to go to because I think I've asked him the question before, well, how do I get the ad from, you know, for a podcast? And I've got completely, absolutely no interest in it all. I think it's Michelle Obama's um, uh, podcast ad. Why do I end up with that? And Neil has told me before, it'll be based off something that you've Googled somewhere. And of course, everybody knows that when you Google something or if you think of something and you happen to have your phone in your pocket, that all of a sudden the phone understands everything that you're thinking of, it's locked telepathically into your thoughts, and then it suddenly starts showing something that you've spotted somewhere out in the world. Um, so Neil so has Missy, great Missy, questions. Missy, it's not just, po not just postcodes, but we can do it in various different geographic situations, down to postcodes or zip codes in the US, um, or just counties or uh, cities, thing, different geographical regions. But that's why you're not hearing Ollie up where you are now, is because it, they they locked it into Canberra. Yeah, that's what I that's what I've come to realize. Oh, I missed that ad, but it's obviously a Canberra spaced ad, and um and to that area for that to come out. All right, I have one more question for you because I'm mindful of time, and Joe's going to keep taking over. So I have one more question for you, Neil. So I know that you're in America and you can do Spotify, and clearly Spotify is all over the world and it's locked into postcodes and things like that. So when we get this done, uh. Ken, does, does that mean that that filters for if I wanted an ad done in my local region here, it could be done here? Like you can could do be, it. Yes. Oh, neat. Actually, there are restrictions. Australia has a special restriction on it for having people out of country do it, but um, it's something that we can still get done. Okay, neat. So that's good for us to know that we can get stuff done in Australia. We can certainly come to you to ask all of those questions and either you can do it or you can't. On the other hand, if you're someone, say like me, who's a coach that can work anywhere in the world, does it really matter if you get locked to a section of America and then just work in with their time zone? So if you're like me and get up at four o'clock in the morning, you might find that working mm. with someone else's time zone somewhere else in the world because Australians don't get up then, um, you know, might be a more beneficial place for you to run those Spotify ads. Although mm. technically I wouldn't hear my own ad, would I? It's possible that you okay. might. <laughs> yeah, it is possible. Um, mm. One of the things is, okay. is you talk about Australian or Australia, we do have different accents so we can match a local accent wherever we are in the world too whether it's the UK or Southern US or, or Canada or whatever, um, Australia, New Zealand. Yes, we can add, we have voice talent that are native speakers from those areas. I've noticed Sarah has had her hand up for a while. I didn't yeah, want to yeah. leave oh, her there getting a cramp. Before you ask her, just before you ask her, because you've just given me an idea, or you might be able to match to that local space. But here's what I know from being networking all over the world. Americans love Australian accents, just like we Australians love everybody else's <laughs> accents. And so if you run your own accent somewhere else, it could be that you get work because they've fallen in love with your voice. Just a thought. I'm just throwing it out there, not for you to make comments or for anyone else. Just, just think about that too. Um, that could be fun. All right, Sarah, you can ask me a question. Um, is this ad associated maybe with just one podcast at a time? Or can it be spread amongst a few? It will be matched to what people are doing online. Um, here's an example I gave Misty earlier. If if you and your neighbor start this the exact same podcast at the exact same time, you will probably both get a different ad when the ads come on. What that basically translates to is 
the ads are targeted to the individual by what you've done online, um, by what you're searching for, um, products you've purchased, things you've looked up, um, all that kind of information is stored online somewhere, all those algorithms um, collect it all and decide you're going to get this ad versus you. It's kind of the same way when you see banner advertisements. Um, one lady said, that, so it's like when I was looking for shoes, the next couple of weeks, all I got in my banner ads were ads for shoes. And I said, yeah, that's that's pretty much how it works to try and make sure that the right people are hearing it. So from the advertiser's point of view, you're not overspending by uh, people who are might be interested, but might not. Uh, there was a joke of that I heard the other, I don't remember, it might've been here actually, where a guy said he wanted to buy some shoes. So he decided to take out his phone, said, I need some shoes and wait for the ads to show up. It's similar to what Misty said a few seconds ago, is your phone is always listening and it's going to remember those things and start targeting you with them. But what I'm saying is if you're, are you placing the ad on your Spotify so that it can go across? I have, I do anything from four to eight shows a week. So is it per show or is it under your Spotify label that the ad will go up? The ad for the program we're in, you, there's different aspects for podcasts. You can have specific advertisers for your podcasts and you can have those arranged. Um, the programs that I work through are general. So if if your podcast is listened to by people that are targeted from the business I'm advertising, they're going to hear on your podcast, uh, your commercial breaks in your podcast, they're going to hear your ads, the ads that we're looking for. So okay. it, it can be in some of your podcasts, it may be, it may not be, and it all depends upon the people who are listening. Okay, thank you. And then, yeah, and you you kind of have an idea of who's listening because of what your topic is. So, yeah, that's... You help that's us great. write the ads, right, Neil? Pardon me? You help us write the ads. You don't You don't just expect us to... You invent it and then we'll put it out there. You help us write oh, the no. ads. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely help you write the ad. We've been writing ads for yeah. 35 years or something, and there is an art to it. You can't... Um, there's a, a, a radio trainer in, in the States in LA called Dan O'Day, and his favorite thing is he talks about people holding up a newspaper ad to a microphone. And it just doesn't work to go through all these um, talking points, essentially, these bullet points on a newspaper ad and try and make them sound good on radio. Yeah. It has to be emotionally relatable. And that's one of the things that that makes the ad so memorable to people is because it's got to be something that they can identify with. Yeah, excellent. Thank you so much, Neil, for being our speaker today. Thank you for being thrown under the bus. Yes, one more thing. One other thing that occurred to me is um, I remember seeing some ads on LinkedIn. Some people had done some uh, posts and were using music that was under copyright, um, mm -hmm. using popular songs, maybe using Pink or something like that. The penalty here in the States for doing that, for selling something is about $10,000 per broadcast. So that's um, something that you can get in a lot of trouble with. Make sure that you're using um, anything you put in out to promote your business, that you have the rights to to use that product, because otherwise um, you can get smacked hard for that. Excellent. And then obviously going through um, like someone like you who does ads and knows all of this stuff, that's all put into play before it's even sent out in the first place. So yeah, another the, reason to get right. a professional, right? Because they know yeah. what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly, certainly cheaper to have it done right in the first place. That's one of my dad's things is you could, you didn't have time to do it right in the first place, but you have the time to do it over again. Yeah. Yeah. But it's cheaper to do it right the first time, regardless of Absolutely. the cost. All right. Well done. Thank you so much, Neil. I love that as um, like an end thought for us. Cheaper to do it right the first time than it is the second. Thank you so much.